Good afternoon, grade 10s. Today we're going to continue with chapter 4, solving basic mathematical problems using Delphi. Specifically, we are covering module 4.3 today, which is on mathematical functions. So, that means I'm going to introduce you to functions that can produce certain results. So, let's look at our textbook. We have already looked at a couple of functions. For example, our casting um, functions, string to float, string to int, int to string, float to string, and yesterday specifically on the float to string f, which was a formatting um, function. Today we have mathematical functions. So the five that we have is the SQR or SQR square, um, which calculates the square of a specific number. We have square root, which calculates the square root of a number. We have the round functions, which will round a number to a sp specified um, number place or decimal. And we have the trunk function, which trunk stretch, which cuts off the decimal place, and then we have the random functions, um, which will generate a random number um, in a specific range. Um, there are other functions that I would um, have loved to introduce to you um, today already, but let's keep it at those five, and I will introduce the other ones, once I see you again in class, hopefully rather sooner than later. So maybe one thing to understand about a function is that a function cannot stand on its own. So we, we, you, you already know the um, show message. Show message is not a function. Although it looks like a function and it's got a parameter, something that, you know, if the text that it needs to display. But it does not need to be stored. The result does not need to be stored in a variable or in a component. With a function, it calculates something or does something and it has a result, but it needs to be stored in a variable the result of that calculation needs to be stored in a variable or in a component. So a procedure, show message would be a procedure. It does something and can stand on its own. A function needs to be assigned to something. So in case of square root, we would have, for example, our R number or R result, um, or an I number, depending on um, you know what calculations we are doing. Um, square root um, will be of real data type. We will have the round, um, it, it, it needs to round, and where does that result, where is it stored? So with all of them, we need to assign that to a, a variable or a component. Like in the example that they've given here, I number, which is a variable, colon equals random, and then we have an open bracket over here, and then um, we need an integer. And I will explain to you how the random function um, works just now. All right, so um, how do we do this? So we have a function keyword. We obviously need to assign first um, a variable. Function name, for example, random. The data required by the function, for example, constant range integer, which is normal an integer, a normal number, and then return type of the function, for example, yeah, don't um, yeah, don't worry about that now because this is actually um, declaring the the function. So the result type of this function is an integer. You cannot um, produce a real number with the random function. So if I would go um, and highlight square root, um, it would say of real data type. The result will be of a real data type. So depending on 
what is said here in the int, the data type of that function, we have to make sure that it, the component or the variable that we store the result in corresponds with the data type of the function. Now, very, very important, if we want to make use of these functions, we have to add, um, oh, glory, a math to our user section. Um, I'm in the wrong place. Let's see. Uh, font. There we go. There, user section of the form, right on top. So you just say comma, math. Otherwise, um, you can the, the program will not recognize these functions. All right. So let's have a closer look at these functions. So the square function calculates the square of a number, um, the number that is multiplied by itself. So two by two or five by five. Um, the syntax of that is so you have the function name and then it needs the number that it needs to calculate. Okay, so R square, square um, 4, um, R square is now 16, R square, um, square 1.6, R square is 2.56. So you can see now already that the um, data type of the square function is actually real, so you have to make sure even if the result is a integer you need to um, declare it as a real because we are able to use real values and square them as well. Okay, so message caption into string. Um, interesting. Um, this is inum. This should be float to string over here. All right, just change that. I'm not going to re-record because they've made a mistake in the um, textbook. Okay, then the square root function, the um, syntax very similar to the square. It has a function name as well as the number that we want to calculate the root of. Um, again, um, so it can either be an integer or real. Um, the argument number, just like in mathematics, you can only find the square root of a positive number, so no negative numbers allowed. With the square function, obviously, you can use negative numbers. Um, they will just have positive results. Um, okay, you can look at the example. Um, the round function, again, we have a, a function round and the number, and then, um, yeah. So they, you can actually um, use round with um, with decimals or can specify to which place you want to round. But in this case, we are just using it as rounding it to the nearest um, integer. Okay. Very important is if the decimal value is above one um, zero point five, it will be rounded up. If the decimal value is exactly 0 0.5, it will be rounded to the nearest even number, which could be up or down. So in this case, 12.5 is rounded to 12. Um, so it's rounded down because 12 is the nearest even number. And then 13.5 is rounded up to 14 because 14 is the nearest even number, whole number. Okay, that's something tricky. Um, here, 12.5, again, the nearest whole number is minus 12, so the result will be minus 12, and minus 13.5 will be minus 14. All right. Then we have the trunk function. Um, we have, for example, here, trunk 2.9999. If we would have used the round function here, the result would have been 3, but trunk simply just cuts off all the decimal places. Um, so trunk 2.4 will be 2, trunk 7.5 will be 7. And now the random function um, has, yeah, um, we can have a, either just random um, or we have a 
number of random numbers. If I just say random, it will generate a random decimal number from 0 to less than 1. If I use random with an argument, it will, let's say random 10, it will generate a number between 0 and 9, which are 10 possibilities. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are 10 numbers. It does not include 10. So if we want to actually generate a number between 1 and 10, I would have to say random in brackets 10 and then plus 1. So whatever result it is, if it's 0, it will add 1. If it is 9, it will add 1. So our range is increased from 0 to 9 to actually from to 1 to 10. If you want to have a range between 10 and 20, you would have to say, um, you know, random 10 plus 11. So that is something that might be a little bit tricky, but you can actually work that out very easily. Um, okay, so over here, um, random 51. So this will be in the range um, from 5. Oh, second break is starting. Not yet. Um, not for you anyways. Um, by the time you have this, watch this video, it will be um, close to the end of school. Okay, so the result is an integer number in the range of 5 to 55. Again, um, it's 51 numbers over there because we want to include 55 in our um, result. Um, okay, um, let's continue. If we use our random function, every time you run your program, it will return the same result unless we use another and this is a well they calling a command um, it is actually a procedure if you use um, random functions you have to randomize the whole process and we do that by simply writing the word randomize semicolon um, which will generate generate um, a truly random number so whenever you use random or random range that I will introduce you to you later, you have to use random um, randomize. Okay, guided activity. Um, write down the code that you will um, that will do the following. Assign the result to a um, result variable um, of the appropriate data type. So calculate the square root of a hundred. So um, Let's do it like this. So let's say our num colon equals square root, and then we have a hundred. Okay, and that would be it. Um, the next one. Ugh, where did I go? I'm not sure where I am. There we are back. And my result disappeared as well. But I don't worry now because I will sum up, just type the next one. Select a random number between 0 and 10, excluding 10. So now what do I have to do first? I have to say randomize and then I have inum colon equals um, random and then we'll have 10 semicolon okay it's obviously over two lines okay then um, we have round the number um, 13.5 so I will have I num colon equals round and then I can say 13.45 I 
think you get the, the drift of this. Um, calculate the square um, of 7.1, so that would be um, R num colon equals square and then in bracket 7.1. Select a random number um, between 0 and 1. That's again randomize and then I will say just random, nothing else. Um, round will be the same as this one. Round the number down to the nearest integer. Um, so maybe we can do this one. So this one will be I num colon equals trunk um, 42.78. Um, there are other functions like round, round down or, um, for example, a floor function. So instead of trunk, I can actually say here floor um, 42.78, um, which will do exactly the same. Or we use trunk or we use round down. But for now, they ask you to use the trunk function. Select a random number between one and six, including six. Um, so let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's, um, that's six numbers that is needed. So we do this. Um, I random colon equals random six plus one. All right. Why? Because if random will produce the highest number of actually five, but the plus one will make it into um, six. All right. That um, concludes the guided activity. I'm gonna dis that's gonna disappear. And then um, I would like you to do activity 4.8. Um, there's a lot of these activities now. Um, I, what I suggest is that you do one of these activities, um, maybe 4.8.2, um, or you know, read through them and you can do one of them. And there's activity um, 4.9. So do one of 4.8, do one um, on, well, there is only one, 4.9, um, and then choose, um, do activity 4.10, and that actually concludes um, our chapter on the mathematical functions, but do one of each, and then go back if there's time to do some others, and practice, um, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. All right, guys, um, I think this concludes the lesson for today.